I'm Michael Krigsman, an industry analyst and the host of CXO Talk. And we're here in Las Vegas at the Financial Force Conference Community Live 2017. I am speaking with Tim McAdam, who is a general partner at TCV. Hey, Tim, how are you doing? Hi, Michael. Pretty good. How are you? Great. Tell us about TCV. Yeah, so TCV is a private equity firm, and we are focused exclusively on IT businesses that are in their growth stage, so they're pretty mature. Uh, we've been around for 22 years. We're investing out of our ninth fund and currently manage about $12 billion. And you are an investor in Financial Force. I am. So I'm on the board of Financial Force, which is a very typical TCV investment. Uh, we invested about uh, two years ago into the company. There was a lot of talk today about the new services economy. And so when we talk about that, what are, what are we referring to? Yeah, I think Todd did a nice job on stage earlier talking about uh, how the world across um, many sectors of the GDP is kind of moving to a services economy. I thought the example he gave with Boeing actually renting their planes to the United States of the world as opposed to selling them is a really interesting uh, tidbit about how deep it is actually affecting the manufacturing sector. Uh, but the services economy, as I think about it, is um, it, it's almost the instant on economy. You, you can pretty much subscribe to anything right now, either an app format or online, uh, and not have to physically go to a store, in the case of the enterprise, um, crunch the data that you used to crunch manually. We have a, an investment in our portfolio called Avalara that allows you to calculate your sales and use tax uh, automatically as a service uh, on demand. So it's far reaching across multiple sectors of the economy, but I think it's transforming the way businesses think about their end user consumers for sure. So if Boeing, such a large established company, can transition at least part of its business model, an important part, to being a service economy component, any business can do it. But it's hard, though. It's a challenge for a big company. It's a mindset challenge. I think given how many infrastructure software companies are making it easier, and Financial Force, I think, is a great example of that, uh, connecting you know, the front office to the back office uh, using the Salesforce or CRM a customer record and tying that customer record to back office processes like invoicing, the service contract, billing, and you know down into the, the weeds of the general ledger uh, are transforming the way people think about the service economy and, and managing that relationship with consumers. And there's a very important data component as well. Yeah, I think more and more analytics is becoming um, the key to driving decisions at the enterprise. And the, uh, the great thing about building on the force.com stack is you get um, the utility and use of everything that Salesforce is developing for their ISV partners. In the case of analytics, it's, it's the Wave platform, which gives you a graphical representation of what's happening at the data level. And now with the release of Einstein, you really get AI and machine learning wrapped around Wave in order to allow business um, uh, analysts to make better decisions. You mentioned mindset. And if you talk about mindset, that's not the technology. And so what's the, what's the role of the non-technology components in all of this? What we're seeing in, in most of our customers, and not just financial force customers, but other customers, is that it's, it's a mindset shift more than it is a technology shift. So that uh, customer journey of you know, quote or, re or contract to renewal is one where you have to have multiple touch points in order to keep that customer happy, whether it's an enterprise customer or a consumer, uh, so they will renew when their subscription is up in a year or two or three years. Because if they don't renew, if they're not happy, they won't renew, and of course there, there goes your revenue. Yeah, I mean, so much um, uh, is tied to renewal rates in, in these subscription businesses, whether it's a subscription SaaS company or subscribing to coffee beans, which I do from multiple roasteries all over the place. Customer loyalty is king, and what it costs to attract and retain a customer is the crux of your economic model. So you have to be able to keep that customer happy uh, during that period leading up to the point where it's time for them to renew. So that economic model then becomes a driver for providing the right type of experience for your customers. I, I think that's right. I mean, I think that um, when you think about investing in 
uh, your technology in order to manage that customer relationship, um, having the ability to have signals into that customer relationship to know when things aren't going right uh, or how often that consumer or end user customer is interacting with your service is uh, critically important, I think, to uh, ultimately the renewal rate that you enjoy as a, as, a com as a company and your net promoter score. I mean, so much of um, not just technology, but every sector of the economy turns on on the net promoter score and, and customer loyalty. And if you have a, a high NPS and you have a very low churn rate, that uh, ties directly into creating equity value. And all of these things you're describing also require the breaking down of silos inside the company. So there's sharing of information, sharing of that data, and presenting a unified face to the customer. I think that's right. Um, you mean, ultimately, uh, it used to be over time, this data was all siloed. There were multiple data stores, multiple customer records, and uh, Financial Force's reason for being is, is uh, streamlining that entire uh, customer journey and not having multiple stores, but having multiple applications and processes tied to one data record. This is much easier said than done. And so what advice do you have for existing businesses that are looking at this and saying, we need to do this, but how do we do it? I think the biggest hurdle uh, for most enterprises is the mindset shift of changing a process or changing the way they've done it forever. And the reality is, that a lot of their business can be instrumented now with analytics, with AI, with machine learning to allow them to make intelligent decisions using the data. So I guess my advice would be trust the data, use the tools that are out there in software land uh, to uh, make better decisions. Trust the data. Tim McAdam, thank you so much. All right, Michael. Thanks. Thanks.